Hello VTubers, Failure here, and welcome to the 2013 edition of Let's Go to France and Fade Away, Stage 1. And the first stage of the year Tour de France is from Porto Vecchio to Bastia. This is not the most hilly stage, but there is sure gonna be a lot of wind. They're all driving down the hill or the coastline of a French island, and it's gonna be 215 kilometers of just ocean view. It's gonna be an amazing view, but I think they'll be <laughs> busy trying to stay in the front and being sure that no gaps are getting created because the wind is gonna be immense on this stage. I can already tell you that. Also, the big favorite for this one has to be the sprinters. Guys like Andre Greibel, Mark Cavendish, Peter Sagan has to be the three big favorites for this stage. And I believe Mark Cavendish got the upper hand on the two others because he has shown in the past that he is the best guy to, to sprint in the end on flat road. Though, though, if the end was going uphill, Peter Sagan would have won it. I don't believe that. But it's also, Greibel's team, though, is really stronger than Ka Cavendish and Sagan. Like, the leader train from, from Lotto Bellisol, I would kind of stronger than uh, Mega Farmer Quickstep and Cannondale, but I still believe that Cavendish is the ultimate favorite. Welcome to the first live pictures and led to the France to fade away. And what about I just tell you what happened so far when you didn't have TV pictures? So, in the beginning, it was a nice morning stroll, no one really attacked or anything, but then... Five riders decided to attack, only three of them succeeded. Those three that succeeded were Ian Stannard and his, what are the other guys called? It was Labarto and Mujev, Murkhiev. And on the mountain, on the mountain sprint, it was Labarto who won from Muscatel. We'll be seeing him and the Polka Dot jersey tomorrow. Then, later on, there was a sprint, intermediate sprint. Ian Stannard was the fastest of the three guy breakaway. Ian Stannard beat Labarto and Mujev. But more interesting, down the peloton. Mark Cavendish, Matthew Goss, and Greibel had a big match for the points. And Cavendish beat Goss and Greibel, not by that much, but enough to say that I'm the best right now. You gotta watch out. So that's always nice. And now to the nice little thing I'm adding to this. Here's La Tour de France. I'm gonna add what's called a bio. I'll just tell you a little bit about every rider in this race. As you'll see, you'll see Cavendish. He's sitting right there in the... British Jersey. Okay, his name is Mark Cavendish. He's also known as the Man's Missile. He's also from the Isle of Man, so that's a lot of Man's, a lot of M's. He's probably got the strongest team in the entire Tour de France regarding sprints. But, one thing, he, compared to Greipel, maybe not actually, maybe not the strongest. <laughs> uh, that's a lie, that's a lie. He probably doesn't have the strongest team. Greipel does. But it's strong enough. It's stronger than uh, Sagan's team, to be honest. And, but when he gets in the slump, he is not the best guy. You can have the best team, but get in the slump, and then you're screwed. So, if he doesn't win stages, he becomes bad. But, he's also the guy in the peloton with the most stage wins. So that's really good for him. That He's got the experience. He knows what to do. But he also got anger issues. That's one thing. Anger issues. Can, it can be seen as a good thing or a bad thing. I see it as a bad thing, in my opinion. But, he's also smart. That's a lot of bots. I'm sorry. But he's smart. Another bot. He's really, really smart. He doesn't need a leader train. He can just go on his own. If he doesn't have a leader train, he'll just go. He'll just make a leader train of his own. He'll go. He'll be the first rider. He'll be the second rider. He'll be the third rider. He'll be the sprinter. I mean, what the heck? And, the last thing, but not least, his ability to climb is terrible. Like, if he wants to compete against Sagan for the green jersey this year, he's got to be able to do something. Like, it's just so terrible seeing him going uphill. Like, most of the times he just dies, which is a shame because he's such a strong sprinter, so he really needs to work on the ability to go over hills and mountains. But that was a nice little biology about him, and you'll also be able to see the stages down below, like, all the stage victories and placements he's got so far. And that's a really nice resume. But I think it's time for a commercial guide, because this channel does not pay itself. We need commercials. See you, and by the way, don't click away, don't click away during the commercial, don't sap, I know you all sap around with doing commercials, but this won't be worth it. Do you like the video so far? Then why don't you press the like button? Thank you. I hope you didn't sap away, because we're now into the final kilometers, and it's gonna be exciting. You can almost feel the intensity in the air, you can actually take a bite out of it, that's how thick the intensity is right now. It's about finding the right wheel, it's about setting your leader train up, and I see Benati sitting on, on Grimes' wheel right now. That's probably one of the best wheels you can have in the entire sprint, except for Cavendish, or Marcel Kittler, guys like that. Okay, let's just check it to see for a second. Oh, Froome is there, and down here you see Contador. Yep, he's sitting right there, so the big guys, the big guns are sitting really good. 
And the peloton actually broke for a second. I see uh, Rogers and Kreuziger all actually fell behind already. That's not too good for the Saxo Bank team, but it doesn't matter because they're going for Contador. They're not going to use him. It might be, if Contador gets a defect, it might be a bad thing. But let's see right now, the breakaway is almost caught. Only got 50 seconds left. They're going faster and faster than the peloton. You can, all, you can really see the leader trains. On the right side, you see... Or Ricky Green is sitting up there. On the left side, you see Omega Farmer Quixi sitting up there. In the middle, you see August Shimano. And behind them, you see... Uh, where is he? Greipel. Oh, he fell that far behind? Ooh, we gotta find a better... The best wheel. And I talked to the Team Saxon Bank Tink of General Manager before this stage, Brianna Reese. He said that Bernardi's not feeling too good. He might just go for the best place. But he does not think he'll win the stage. That's how, how he's feeling today. So that's that's a shame. But that's how it is. Some days you just have bad days. Let's see. Oh, there they go. See, Rick Green has uh, train with Sagan on the wheel and Bernardi. But Bernardi lost the wheel, it seems like. Oh, he found the wheel again. He found Sagan's wheel. Right now, Bernardi's sitting really good. Oh, on the right side, there comes Cavendish. What the heck is going on? They're going way faster. Rick Green is slow completely down. Let's see in the front. Right now, Rick, uh, Omega Farmer Quickstep sitting best with Cavendish. But right in the left side corner is Grapel sitting. Is he changing? Is Bernardi's changing wheels, and here it goes, the final sprint is on, who is it going to be? Let's see, Rollins is sitting in front with Cavendish, what's it going to be? There is massive blockage down here, we single, see Dingle Cup going fast, this is just intense. In the front, we see Rollins, there goes Dingle Cup, Dingle Cup's off the final kilometers, Cavendish hasn't gone yet, Grable Cavendish hasn't gone yet, is it too late, is it too late, here it goes, here they go, Cavendish on the right side, Grable in the middle, Dingle Cup on the left side, it seems like Cavendish is going to be the winner. Grable gonna get second, Dingle gonna third. Here comes Kittle for fourth place. They just went on two different sprinting trains. So Kevin just wins. Grable second, Dingle Cup fourth, and third, and Marshall killed fourth. That Akashimano train was so stupid. If they would have gone for one guy, I promise you they would have won. But Jorgen Rollins gets sixth on the stage, even beating the team section by Tink of Sprinter. Holy cow, that's really impressive by you. But we really have to take an instant replay look at that sprint, because that was so intense. Even a photo finish might just be in place for this stage. This instant replay is sponsored by Focus, Cyanide, and Pro Cycling Manager. We're in the last kilometer. We see right now Kevin and Stigman's wheel on the left side. We have Greipel and Roland's wheel. They are really not sprinting so far. They have not at least a final sprint, but there they both go at the same time. Both Greipel and Kevin go at the same time. But Dingle comes all insulated on the left side. That's probably why he lost the sprint. Otherwise, he would have won. But Kevin just has a bigger finish than Greipel. Good do to Kevin. That's a really nice finish. That's a textbook finish. As you can see, the photo finish was really close. Greipel was coming up right behind him with the two Agushimano riders right behind him. That was an intense sprint. You couldn't stand the Tour de France any other way than by Cavendish winning it. It's just tradition. Good job, Cavendish. And that was an exciting sprint. Good job to every team in this sprint because they were so good that it was just you didn't know who's going to win until the last 200 meters. So Cavendish wins it in front of Greipel, Dinkup, Kittle, Goss, Rollins, Benati, Sarkin, Impian, Trenton. Sarkin did terrible in this stage, but to be honest, it's not a stage for him. He's more of an, of an uphill sprinter. So, yeah, well, congratulations to Cavendish for winning the 100th edition of the Tour de France first stage. First stage. He also gets to get in the yellow jersey for at least one stage. But it's probably going to be taken away in the next stage because I believe the next stage there's a category 2 right before the end. Which is completely going to kill him. I'm almost sure of that. So, we're next stage we're going to be seeing Cavendish with 58 points in the overall points jersey. Actually, that will go to Greipel. Greipel will be wearing the green jersey because Cavendish will be wearing the yellow jersey, of course. And I believe the young jersey goes to Dickenkopf or Kittle. I'm not sure which one is younger. But first of all, the Oval Mountain, of course, the Polka Dot jersey, goes to Lobata. Good job, dude. You got it. But you're probably going to lose in the next stage unless you go on the breakaway because there's a lot of points in the next stage. But I believe the white jersey, I'm still thinking about it. I think Dingen Cup it is. Yeah, Dingen Cup and Kittle. They're both on the 25th. Both big talents. But it's good to see Pinot and Van Garderen and all those guys up there for sure. So just so they didn't lose time on the stage, it's just important for them. And the overall best team has got to be Lottie Bellisol with that Jürgen Rollins in top 10. Good job, Jürgen Rollins. Team Saxon Bank Team of 8th, the Danish Pride, still doing pretty good. So let's see what the League Quip newspaper has to say about that stage. They think that Tour de France, a win for Cavendish, the best title of the day. You can buy this newspaper for 95 euros at your local supermarket. Go do it. Okay, thank you guys for watching. See you guys.